Good morning again. Okay, so this is going to be our Friday class um, techniques. So um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and share, and hopefully I've got this video thing down with my pausing if I need to, but uh, here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Let's go over here and share and minimize that and make this big. Okay, so just to touch base, again, I have tape. I have some pastels over here that I could make borders with. Um, I... I'm going to go ahead and do the rubbing alcohol. I just used this little marching on cherry thing, but there, this is just basic rubbing alcohol in here. Um, I am going to talk about, oh, oh, I hope I didn't just break my phone. Okay. Um, paper towel or lifting, and you could use cotton. Uh, you could try different materials, t-shirt, uh, anything that's cotton that will soak up really good. I'm going to do something called scraffito and I just use a paper clip. So maybe you can find something else that you could scratch with and do scraffito. And then um, I'm going to talk about the straw technique or you can just blow. You don't need a straw. So if you don't have a straw, you could still do that technique. Um, and let's see, was there? Oh, um, let's see. I could talk about stamping. Let's see how much time I can get this done. I like to do 12 techniques. Some of them you may not have supplies and that's okay. So I'm gonna use a shell to show stamping, but you could paint over flowers and leaves and see what you get. Your job in the next few weeks is just to be playing with materials and see what you can do at home because we're not gonna be painting at school. Okay, so I'm gonna try that with that. Now, I left off in the last video, this is now dry. And as you can, if you can hear, you can hear the salt. So I'm going to just uplift the salt, just rub it. And then I have a little garbage sack that I'm going to dump that in so it doesn't end up all over the rug and the floor. Salt is very corrosive, it will break things down. So I'm gonna rub that. And then I'm gonna show you how to peel off that tape because I think that's really important. Okay, so when you are taking your tape off, and again, I folded this under a little, what I found is that if you pull from the side, which is kind of weird to think about, but I'm gonna start up here. If I pull sideways, so I'm not just ripping it straight off, like rip the Band-Aid off, but I'm pulling it, so look at, it's just coming from the side and I'm pulling gently at a steady pace. It got a little bit of the paper. Okay, and I'm down here at the end. And again, I'm gonna pull from the side and hope that it doesn't grab onto my paper and rip it up. Remember, always wait till your paint dries before you pull up the tape. Now notice if you could, I don't know if you can see, you can't see it went off screen. Uh, this pulled up a little bit of the paper. Okay, be very careful. Now, when we use the thicker paper that I will send you home with when you come to school, um, it is much heavier paper. I wanna say 140 pound paper. Um, I'm gonna start from another, if it, if it's attaching and grabbing onto your paper, start somewhere else and come back the other way. Sometimes it just does it, but have patience. This isn't a hurry up and go. Notice it what the tape wasn't down very well, so I didn't get a nice crisp border there. These are all going to be things that you're going to be practicing and thinking about. Okay. So these are all your practice things. Remember, you're practicing the techniques and you're practicing and playing with your tools. So practice with different kinds of borders. Uh, if you're gonna use crayon or pastel because you don't have tape yet, uh, practice with it. How does it work? Do you like it? Because you are gonna end up making travel posters and you get to decide what kind of border you're gonna have for your watercolor poster or if you're going to, uh, make, you know, no border, have a nice soft painted edge. Um, uh oh, it's grabbing paper. So I'm going to go back this way. 
and continue going slow and pulling it sideways. Have patience. Well, we grabbed on. I was going a little bit too fast because I'm doing a video, so I'm trying not to be too time consuming. I want to start pulling from the side. And I think I wrapped this one around my paper. Anyway, when we get to the travel posters, you get a lot of choice about how you do things. You may choose to draw it with pastels and crayons and then be adding your watercolor. You may choose to start out with a watercolor background and then add pastels and salt for different techniques and uh, stamping. But you will be required to use a certain number of techniques, but you are going to lay it out and be thinking about, you know, because we kind of rough sketch out things before we go to the final project. Um, but I want you to be thinking about what kind of techniques you could use and what. And, and since you know that's where we're going, think about where you'd like to travel to. I have a lot of examples of watercolor posters for travel. Uh, for you to be able to look at as we get going, but I want you to be thinking about where you'd like to go. Now, when I get done with my drawings, I usually write on here, which I'm expecting you to, and I don't like this pen, but I don't know where my other pen is. So this technique was wet. So you're gonna be labeling these because you're gonna take a photo to turn it in. Wet on wet. And I did a little tiny bit of salt down here, but nothing that really affected it. I guess there are some salt, so I better say and salt. Okay, but this one definitely was wet on wet and salt. So you're gonna label what your techniques are. This was wet on wet with salt. Ooh, I really liked the way this one turned out. All crystally, reminds me of a frosty mirror in the winter when it's cold wet on wet and salt. And then of course, this one was uh, wet on dry and pastel. Remember, if you don't have pastels, you can uh, use crayon, okay? Now, uh, let me see if I can focus in really close because I wanted you to see that wet on wet, it's pretty cool. Um, if we go over to this one, Check out what the salt did. The salt is pretty cool. Again, salt has to be done on wet paint. You won't be able to see effects on dry paint. Pretty cool. And I love the pastel with black. You could use any color you want, but I just love how it turns out. And it's very satisfying when you do it. Okay, so let's talk about today. Okay, so I'm going to use tape just because, and I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a couple, few panels so that we can demonstrate some stuff. Again, this is your time. You could be taping off your stuff while you're waiting on me to show you. You could always fast forward through this if you just need to see how Miss Leslie did certain things because you will be on your own when you're doing painting techniques. Uh oh, I ran out of tape. Good thing I've got more in here. Uh oh, but this one's really wide. I'll have to look. I might have to bring home some tape, more tape from school. I have really wide. Look how wide that tape is. So. And you just work with what you have. Oh, let me scroll out so you guys can see what I'm doing. Well, you know what? I've got this wide tape. Why not just play around with the pastels? Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use black just because. And I'm just going to make a nice line here of crayon. Now I'm using crayon. So if you're somebody who doesn't have tape, let's see how it goes. I'm just gonna go along the edge here because the other ones of course have tape. And we'll see how it goes. Who knows, maybe I'll like it way more. Remember, I'm just experimenting with stuff because 
I have to think about what kind of tools you may at home, have at home. Again, we are not doing paint at school, at least watercolor. You'll leave your, your painting supplies at home. We'll do something different if you're coming to school for hybrid. Okay. So again, here I'm talking about my paints. And you know, this one, it's kind of all dried. So let me show you. There's a little bit of wetness in there. Make sure that your, your paint's dry or go and rinse this out. And I usually run the water and use my brush to clean it. It works really well. So I had black, I had purple, and I have blues, okay? And so I am going to show you the watercolor or, uh, lifting technique, which is used with a paper towel. Here's my paper towel. I'm just going to tear off a piece of paper towel. Okay, and then keep your keep all your paint supplies together. So the rest of that white paper towel I have for next time. So I have a piece of paper towel, and this is called the lifting technique, but I um, called paper towel clouds. Notice that a lot of paper towels have an embossing on it. That's what that indention is, that design, kind of looks like Zentangle. I use the smoother side um, just because I get a better technique. I don't want this design to end up on my clouds. So I'm gonna do wet on wet first and I want blue for my sky. So I need to get um, my paint prepped first. So I'm gonna put my water in here, get this going again. And then I'm gonna get some more pigment. I need paint. Remember, I'm gonna keep saying it. Do not let standing water be in your paint pots. That makes it gooey and gross and it doesn't dry right. This is gonna give me a nice blue. Okay, I'm gonna rinse out that brush. I'm gonna get my clean water. Remember, always two waters. Okay, I'm gonna do just a nice, light, wet wash. And I'm going to pick up all this paint and I'm going to do let my blue flow. Okay, then I'm going to do my paper towel clouds and I've got the lightly embossed edge and I just kind of wrap it around my finger. You get to play with this. So you figure out what's working for you. And I'm just going to pick up, I'm trying to maneuver here so you can see. I know that clouds sometimes have a more of a straight edge on the bottom and then they kind of get fluffy. Maybe they're fluffy out of here. You get to decide. And once this dries, you really get to see the cool cloud effect. But this is called lifting. So you can lift. And you know what? You can make any color of clouds you want. If you want to try this with a pink or red or purples, feel free to do that. Okay, so there's my clouds. And this is called lifting. If you don't have paper towel, see what else will work. I've never tried it with toilet paper. Um, I, I no t-shirt, any cotton material will work. So if you have a t-shirt that you wanna use, feel free to use that. Um, it, it looks even better on my paper. Let me turn this. It'll look really cool once it's dry. So if you're doing paper towel clouds and let's say you wanna make a flower on it or something like that, I always let this dry first. So I do those first and go on to some other techniques. And then by the time I get done with these other techniques, this will be dry and I could add stuff to it. So let's try um, the alcohol technique. Again, if you don't have alcohol, you aren't required to do this, but I still think it's really fun. And maybe you can get your hands on some alcohol is pretty cheap, like a buck for a big bottle of it. And then I find some small container to use so that you can actually access it and you're not, you know, making a mess with a big bottle. Okay. So I am going to, what am I going to do? I am going to, maybe I'll use purple. So let me scrape this off and clean out my brush. Cause you know me, I like the purples. I like the purples. Maybe I want to do pink or orange. I don't know. I haven't decided. We all do that. I'm going to add some clean water to this and I'm going to do some red. Now, depending on how much water you have, that will give you a pinker color or it will give you a nice red. So you get to decide how much water you add or how much pigment you add to your water. Remember, this is your time to experiment with the paints and the techniques. 
Okay, what am I gonna do? What did I decide to do? Uh, let me go ahead. I, oh, and I wanna do the straw technique with you. So I need another background. So maybe I'll do this background. Okay, I'm gonna clean the brush and I'm gonna do a light wash of water on this. Light wash of water. Uh-oh, looks like I had some color or something. Oh, it's probably grabbing little bits of, of uh, black crayon. Be careful of that, right? And notice that this paint stopped at the crayon. So you could definitely get a nice border with that. Okay, I want a little more water. Get this. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go over the whole thing. And I will say, if you get extra paint over here, check this out. I'm gonna wash that brush. Okay, I'm gonna just wipe it on my newspaper I'm using. And then look at it will soak up. Do you see it soaking up? It soaks it up. So that's called dry brush. If you want to soak up some paint along your edge, maybe you got too much paint, kind of like lifting, kind of like lifting that we would use with a paper towel. Um, again, I could go all along this and it will pick up right along the edge. Okay, so. I wanna do a little bit of alcohol technique. Again, I use a straw, but there's no reason that you can't experiment with other things with dripping, okay? Remember how when you were a little kid and you'd hold your finger over the end of the straw to pick up some liquid? Well, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm just gonna drip. Whoa, that was a big drip. I could also run my straw with some alcohol. I'm not letting go of the tip, notice. Whoa, too much. Well, maybe I just dip it and then I run it. Yeah, I can do that. It works too much alcohol. But this gives you some really fun effects. And then I like to, when it dries, take a black Sharpie and draw things on it that I can see. Um, so that is alcohol technique. And again, play with it. It will not work on dry paint. You won't see anything if I dripped it on this because this is dry right here. It has to be wet. Okay. Now that doesn't mean necessarily that you had to do wet on wet technique to get it, but your paint has to be wet in order to see the alcohol effects. Now, the next one we're gonna do is called Scrofito. I'm gonna go ahead and do Scrofito. Okay, and I'm just gonna use the edge of this and I'm gonna scratch and design. Again, I like my little sunshines and you're just scratching and design. So you can use anything that will scratch a design. I'm gonna do my little sunshine here. Whoops. And I'm gonna do a flower, some petals, just so you can see how the paint lays in the scrofito. And um, I've seen some really cool um, work done in clay with scrofito and paint. I'm sure you could use it in other things too. Maybe a mud pie. <laughs> okay, I just scratched. Whoa, there's a lot of alcohol over here. I had a I had an explosion out of the straw. So I'm gonna soak a little bit of that up. It's getting all over me. Okay, and then I'm gonna do kind of a wash of green into blue for my sky. So here we go. Make sure my brush is clean, okay. And I have some blue already. Now I'm not gonna do wet on wet. I'm just gonna grab some blue. And my brush was wet, okay. And I'm gonna just go across the top. Now notice what it's doing with the scrofito. Uh oh, there's a piece of string in there. See that, that's a piece of brush string. Let's get that out of there. Wipe it off on my, okay, I've got this. And then I'm gonna clean that brush and I'm gonna make um, some green for the grass below. Now, when you do scrofito, you wanna definitely do the scratching first and then do the paint or else you won't see the scrofito. If you do scrofito over the top, the, the paint's not going to go into that rough edge that the scratching makes. Okay, again, make sure you get all the water, the standing water out of your paint pots. Okay, and I'm gonna go 
across here on the bottom. And I kind of fade these into each other. There's no right or wrong, you guys. This is your work. You get to play with the materials. And because I'm doing a demo, sometimes things don't, I'm trying to be quick and speedy. I'm gonna dry out this brush. I'm gonna grab some of this lift some of this extra paint with my dry brush, dab it off on my paper. Okay. And I could even, I don't know if this is still wet enough, but I could do a little bit of paper towel cloud back here. Let's see. Remember, oh no, it's too dry. Yep, look, oh, we got a little bit of cloud over here. So give it a little bit of dotty. Uh, not much. Okay, remember that when you do paper, look, paper towel cloud or lifting needs to be wet. Notice it only picked up a little bit. It's too dry already because I did a, a wet on dry on this. Okay, but I just want to show you Scraffito. Okay, so what else did I want? Oh, I wanted to show you the blowing technique. So we're going to use the blowing technique on this. This is dry now. Okay, with the blowing technique, I'm gonna turn my paper here, move these, okay. Now, with the blowing technique, I'm gonna go ahead and use this smaller brush. I haven't used it yet, and I'm gonna do a brown. This already has black in it, but I want it to be dark, just so you can see what I'm doing on this, make it look like maybe some tree branches. So I'm getting some plain clean water, and I'm going to add more water to my black here. And I'm going to get some brown. Brown and purple work really well for branch colors. I tend to not use too much black. Okay, I'll show you. Here's some brown. Uh oh, it's getting a little bit of black in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a little purple and mix that in with my brown. Okay, now it's really dark, you guys. But what I, you gotta make sure it's wet enough that it'll give you a, dr a drop. And I'm gonna add a drop to this. There should be a standing drop in order to do, oh, it's flicking over here. I'm not sure if I like this brush, it's flicking. Okay, now I'm gonna blow just my mouth this time. Okay, oh, that could be a tree branch when we turn this, right? But I want you to play with this. I wanna get a little more brown in here. It's very purple. Again, rinse, dip in the clean water. Okay, let's add some more brown to this. Okay, and then I'm gonna get a standing drop. You gotta have enough water in it that there's a standing drop to blow. Okay, I'm gonna put another one right here. Got a nice standing drop. Okay, I'm gonna set this over here. Oop. And I'm gonna get paint everywhere because that's what happens. That's why you want this. And I'm gonna use a straw this time. What I found is short, quick bursts give you a best effect. Let's see if I can get more right here. So that is the straw effect. And I just am gonna pretend that I have branches in my blue sky. Maybe I need another dot right here because let's say this is the very top of the tree. I'm gonna do it again. Short burst. Remember, if you're doing this standing up, don't get lightheaded. Sit down. So you don't pass out. Okay, 
We did the straw effect, the lifting effect, the alcohol technique, scraffito. Let's do some stamping over here. Now I'm just gonna do wet on dry with the stamping and I'm just gonna play around with this because I never know how these things work. Again, I have my little shell. I've already got some brown paint going. Remember, I'm just thinking about time. The shell has a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, texture. So I'm just gonna see what it does. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm happy with that one. Ew, I'm not happy with that one. Let's see, what else do I have really quick? Any kind of uh, cookie cutters that you have? Um, oh, wow. Let's see what I got. I got the side of this candle is kind of ridged. Let's see. It's an old candle holder. It had beads in it. Let's see what happens if I do that. Might not do anything. Let's see. Oh, okay. So guess what, you guys? This is your time to experiment with stuff around the house. Make sure to clean stuff off so mom doesn't get upset. So that gave me that effect. Let me see what else I got right here that I could use. A rock. Um, let's see, do I have any shapes? I'm looking for shapes, like a lid. Like Miss Leslie should have lids. Come on, Miss Leslie. Well, I have a Coca-Cola bottle cap. Let's see, let's see if we can, it's kind of hard to hold though. I'm gonna clean off my brush and notice I got brown everywhere. I'm gonna have to clean this one out now because I don't like it mixing with all my stuff. Let's see if I can get some blue around the edge of this. Let's see how it turns out. Remember, you're experimenting. Experiment, you guys, experiment. This is your opportunity to see what you can do and then share what you're doing. If you found something that turned out really cool, share so we can do it. Let's see how this turned out. Eh, not too cool. A regular lid will give you a nice circle. Eh, that was, I didn't care for that. All my fun stuff that I use is at school. Let's see what else we got while you're there. I'm sure I have a lid somewhere. Miss Leslie should have lids. Sorry, I don't want to waste all this video time. I should have been more prepared. I wasn't gonna do this this stamping one. Let's see what I can get this to do. Will it give me a nice round shape? I don't know. I don't, maybe I don't want to get stuff all over that. Cookie cutters. I have lots of shaped cookie cutters at school, and I love them. Um, metal or plastic, they seem to work the best. Um, but Let's see if we can get a nice circle with this. That gave me a nice circle. I should have some leaves. Try leaves. And sometimes the front or the back of the leaf works differently. So you have to experiment. This is just an old measuring spoon and it works pretty good. So if you were wanting to add some circle techniques, maybe make it look like bubbles or something like that. I'm gonna clean this brush. I'm gonna get some red on here. Wipe off your tools if you're gonna to change colors. And if you wanna be mixing stuff and you don't want your colors to mix, wait till it dries and then add. So sometimes these are, you know, you have to wait. You just have to be patient and wait. So I usually do several panels so that I can come back to something. Okay, well that circle worked. Okay, let me see if there was anything else I wanted you to know today. Scraffito, lifting, uh, straw, uh, stamping. Oh, splatter, <laughs> as I got splatter all over everything. Now, two different ways to do splatter. I've got some red in here. And this is going to make a mess of my thing. So maybe I'll just try to do it for this one. Uh, or I'll change colors and I will do some on this one. Okay. 
Now, depending on the size of brush that you're using, you're gonna get different splatter techniques. I'm gonna use purple on this kind of pinkish red background. So smaller brush, you can tap and get some splatter. Make sure you're splattering where there isn't stuff. You can, uh, let me see, how, what is the other thing? Oh, kids went like this. Uh, that one doesn't work good for this brush. It just painted my finger, that's all it did. And this isn't very wet. I just tend to like to tap. I have more control over tapping. And if you use a bigger brush, you're gonna get bigger, bigger splatters. Okay, I'm gonna get this wet and let's see if we can use the green really quick and see what the big brush does. Whoa, big splats with that brush. You need a stiffer bristle for this kind to work, but this one works pretty good. Okay, I do not like the brush that came with the paints. I'm not happy with that. But clean out your brushes. Make sure your paper dries before you take your paint off or your tape off. Tape, when you're taking your tape off, be gentle and then label the techniques that you were using. Okay, uh, stop share. Okay, so label the techniques that you're using. Clean your brushes. Uh, let your paint, if you didn't get splatter all over like I did, just let them dry and then they'll be ready to go the next time you use them. And always clean up your supplies, clean up your mess. I know that we're fifth period and so when we only have 40 minutes, so if you started something, you may need, able, be, ugh, you may need to be able to do your sixth period class and then come back and finish up with your paint and clean it up. So I love you. <laughs> if you miss class, then you get this video. You can always rewatch it. Okay, I'm gonna 